guys, it's Mandy here from Fun Hands On Learning, and today I'm going to show you the activities I have for pre K. So, the, the um, skills we're working on this week in math are teen numbers, and then the other skill we're working on is shapes. So, I'm going to show you teen number activities and shapes. So this first activity is actually from my springtime. Um, math and literacy activity centers. This one's a math one and I will leave links below where you can get these and this one is filling in missing teen numbers. So it comes with cards. The first set of cards looks like whoop, this. They're um, rain clouds because this is a springtime activity and it is raining here today so this is pertinent for what we're doing today. All right, it's April, so of course it's gonna be raining. All right, and so then it has um, the cloud cards with the missing numbers, and then it has the matching um, number cards that look like this. And so what the student has to do is they take a card and they have to find the matching number. So 16 something, 18, he has to find 17 because 17 is the missing number that would go in there. So um, I would, um, not give them maybe the whole stack of cards so that they don't have to go sifting through, but give them a few choices and then they have to match them up. Um, this is a great activity to do in a pocket chart as well. So I may do this in a pocket chart um, this week. Another uh, teen number activity I have for this week is from my early learners math curriculum. This is uh, the unit on teen numbers, or from the unit on teen, teen numbers, I should say. This is called Safari Time. So this has a safari theme to it. And there are um, three different sets of cards. So there's going to be teen number cards that look like this, okay? And then, um, and teen, what I mean by teen numbers are numbers between 11 through 19. Um, it's, that's the teen number family. Then there are um, place value cards that look like this that represent each of the numbers. And then there are domino cards that also represent each of the numbers. So what the kids are going to do is they're going to take a um, card. So here, let's say this is number 11, and they have to find the two other cards that match it. So they're going to go through their place value cards and they're going to find the number 11, which I'm looking for right here. And then they have to go through their domino cards and also find the number 11, which right here, six and five is 11. And so now I've matched up my, my cards, you can see that, for 11. This would also be another good one to do on a pocket chart. The next thing I have for practicing teen numbers this week is um, these activity mats, and they're just, you know, teen number activity mats. Actually, these ones go up through 20. And um, what we're gonna do is just pick a mat, like I have here, and then match it up with puzzle pieces number puzzle pieces like I have here. These are number puzzle pieces from a Melissa and Doug puzzle. Um, if you don't have these, a lot of you probably have number magnets, or if you don't have number magnets, the kids can just write the answer with a, a dry erase marker if you laminate them. Um, or these come in black and white, so they could just do it as a worksheet as well. But what you can do is, um, for example, this first one here it shows the number 17, so they would write 17 in the box, or, they can use their little um, pieces and put it on there. And then what they're gonna do is they're just gonna continue on until they have covered up all of the spots on their mat. And so basically it's just counting uh, teen numbers and filling it in. All right, so another thing I wanted to show you as far as math goes this week is we still are using our learning math level proficiency um, sheets. We use this along with my math curriculum, my early learners math curriculum and um, curriculum, can, I can't even talk today. Oh, and I need to slow down. I know I talk fast in these videos sometimes. Um, I apologize for that. That is pretty much because A, I'm a talker and I tend to talk fast, and B, I tend to try to get these videos done quickly because I usually have children who need me. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyways, going on. Uh, we still use my Learn Math level proficiency sheets, and um, there's two levels. There's level A and level B. Here you can see actually one of my kiddos did this page, and we just haven't erased it yet. I have them uh, laminated, and they're in 
little, or not laminated, they're in little plastic sleeves, so we can use dry erase markers over and over again. Um, but you could print them out in black and white and just use them as worksheets if you wanted, or you could even cut them up into squares. We've done that before and used them as, use them as activity cards. They're a lot of fun. So um, I used to have them in a binder, but now I, I put them in just book wings just to, because um, I wanted to use my binders for something else. Um, and this is working just fine. So here's level B, and so um, my kiddo is on level B now, but you can see like level A is, is is much easier they just say the numbers they're doing just basic telling time um and that kind of thing some measurement so anyways these pages are fun because they do different skills each day uh as they're practicing on each, and we just do one page a day so let me just show you using this page so this is b5 so this is level b page five um and uh it says say the numbers so he would just go along and he would have to say the numbers 102 88 78 87, 16, 12. If he's correct, he gets to color in his star. All right, then it says color the box with the correct symbol. Here I have 18 and 81. So I know 18 is less than 81, so they can circle or they can color in. Um, if you printed out the black and white version, then coloring in would be easier. I just have them circle it if you print out the color version. Okay, and then um, this one is, it says add and color the box with the number, or they can circle. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus two is uh, eight. <laughs> and so they would just mark their answer. And then this last skill here is working on graphing, it looks like. So it says look at the graph, color in the mo uh, the one that has the most. So I'm looking at the data here, and the banana has the most. So I'm going to go ahead and color in my banana. Okay, guys, and then you can so see in my math bin for this week, I just have a few more things, and it's working on shapes. So I told you we were working on um, T numbers, and we're working on shapes this week. So let me just really quick, I'm not going to show you each of these activities, but... I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna tell you that these activities are from the shape unit of my early learners math curriculum, which I will leave links below too. But I'll just run you through really quick what these activities are. I don't pull out all of the activities every week. I just pull out some. So the one I have here is a great one to use in a pocket chart. They are just going to be matching up. Um, it's, a fi it's got a firefighting theme. And they're gonna be matching up um, a like a, a dog to the pictures. So this says circle. So he has to find all of the um, cards that have circles. So here I'm showing you one that has a button. A button is in a circle, so that would match up. And like I said, this would be great to do in a pocket chart. Here's a donut, so a donut would also go with that one. Okay, but you can see some of the other shapes here. I have pizza that would go with the um, triangle, and I have a hanger that would go with a triangle. Um, so you can just kind of see. So they're just going to be matching up shapes with that one. And then um, this next one is hide and find shapes. And this one, you actually need to have your own set of shapes. So what you need for this is you need pattern blocks. I have these um, pattern blocks for, for, that I have are from Learning Resources, but you can get them, just go on Amazon and search for pattern blocks and you can get them from all sorts of different companies. Um, and then uh, what they're gonna do is there's different mats. So here's that one and then here's one that looks like this, one that looks like this, and I think that's it. Okay, and then what I do is I hide the shapes you can hide them in the room. You can hide them in a, I like to hide them in a sensory bin and then the kids have to dig in their sensory bin to find them. And once they find the shape, then they just cover up the picture. So here I found a hexagon and then I would cover it up. And they're just gonna continue looking wherever you've hidden the shapes until they have found all the shapes and can match them all up on, whoop. I dropped one. Match them all up on their mat. So until all of the shapes on their mat are covered. Once those are all covered, we could even do it again with some of the other um, mats that I have here. The thing I really like about this activity is that it tells the child what the shape is. So one, um, they're not just finding the shapes and matching them. Then they're actually practicing the name of each shape as they cover it up. So they're practicing circle and they're practicing square and they're practicing oval. So um, after I have them, after they cover them up, we go through and we take each one off and we say the name of the shape. So they're remembering um, the name of the shape with the actual picture of the shape. Really quick, I know I told you I wasn't going to go through these, um, all these activities, but this one really quick, they would spin and then whatever it lands on, let's say it lands on triangle, you're going to actually use your real shapes. They're going to find a triangle 
and they're going to put it on their mat next to a picture of a triangle. I see a picture triangle here. And then they have to continue until they've filled up their entire mat. All right, and then this last activity I have is actually from my springtime um, math and literacy activity centers. And what they have to do is they take a card, and it's springtime because it's got a flower theme to it as they're practicing shapes. They're gonna use a dry erase marker. They're going to trace the shape on their card. They're gonna trace the word, the name of the shape. So this is, and then they're gonna say it, obviously. They're gonna say circle. And then the last step they have to do is they have to look through their flowers and they have to find the flower that has the circle. And they have to match it up, just like that. And then they can go on to the next card and so on. I just have all sorts of different ones in here and some of them are already traced and I need to erase them. Okay guys, we are moving on to literacy activities and um, right now for pre-K, um, he is doing unit one and unit two, kind of a mixture of unit one and unit two of my phonics for reading program. And um, he's mostly still on unit one, um, which is practicing alphabet, but he, is, he can sound out words, so he can kind of move into some of unit two, which is practicing short vowel words. And so what we're gonna be doing this week is we're gonna be doing the fluency cards. I'm not gonna go through them because I've done, I've shown you these in other videos, but um, he's still doing the fluency um, cards from the alphabet unit. And I suggest continually using these cards with kids, even after they've moved on to further units because practicing the basic sounds never gets old. It's always a good thing. So um, yeah, so he's gonna be doing those. He's still gonna be doing some of the, um, blending. So you've seen these in other videos. Ba, a, ba, ma, a, ma. He's going to go on. So he's going to be doing these different fluency cards. He's going to be doing the picture fluency cards. So if you haven't seen these in any of my other videos, I will leave links below to my other phonics videos. He's also going to be doing the flip it books. Um, he's going to be doing the flip it book from, I pulled out the flip it book from unit one, book three. And he's going to be doing the missing beginning sounds here. Um, we're going to use magnetic letters and he's going to fill those in. And then he's gonna be doing a book one from unit two, which is just kind of a mixture of skills um, that you can kind of see there that he's gonna be doing. I need to erase some of the um, dry erase that has already been done on here. But yeah, so he'll be doing those two flip it books from my phonics curriculum. I also pulled out a whole bunch of my phonics cards because he is doing short vowel words and um, he does know a lot of his sounds. We are doing, these cards come from my phonics activity cards um, set. They all are together, it's one big set. And um, there's actually more cards than just this, but I pulled out a few of them. And he's gonna be doing these. So we use these with um, manipulatives. We usually use them with little erasers and he sounds out. But since it's springtime, I have just some little spring manipulative here, manipulatives here. And he's gonna use each of these. So he's gonna do it like this. K, a, b, cub, cub. And we'll just do a whole bunch of these different words. And as he does them, of course, he's going to be putting a little manipulative on each dot as he segments out each phenome, phoneme, however you wanna say it. Some people say phenome, some people say phoneme. I think it's phoneme. But anyways, so da, e, n, den, den, you get the idea. So we're gonna be doing those, and then some of the other cards, just really quick. This one, they have to, these cards, they have to match the short vowel word to the picture, so he has to mark it, um, either with a manipulative or a clip. So this one would be Cobb, and there's just a handful of those. The, these cards are, as you can see here, I have this in here, ending sounds. So this is an ant, and he'd have to uh, mark the T for ants. These ones are matching beginning um, consonant vowel blend. So this is a web. He'd have to mark web. These ones are marking the vowel sound. So this is a cap. He'd have to mark the A for cap. So there's, you know, you can see there's a bunch of those. And then these ones are just like the first ones you saw, um, blending words. But these ones are just blending consonants and vowels. So actually, we've done plenty of these. I could probably take these out um, because he's pretty good at those. And we will probably just move right into the words. Okay, just a few other quick things I want to show you. I pulled out um, the ending sound mats from my magnetic letter activity mats. 
And so what he has to do is he just has to cover up each one with a magnetic letter for the ending sound. So crab ends with a B, so he would just take a magnetic letter and cover it up. And he's gonna continue doing this until all of them um, on the mat are covered up with a magnetic letter. You get the idea. Um, and there's two mats with that. I'll leave links below where you can get these. Okay, and then this other activity is um, from, it's an activity I made a while ago. It's a magnetic activity where you put magnets on the back of word cards and you can use it on a cookie sheet because it's all magnetic. And then they have to match them up. And I pulled it out because it's, this one is the CVC word mat, it's the short vowels. And he just has to match them up, the actual words up with the pictures. And there's, you know, two different mats here. So like this one says wag, so it would go here. And let's see, I have hop. So half would go here, and he's just going to continue till this whole mat is filled up with the right These words. are the flashcard sticks from my Phonics for Reading program, Unit 1. He has been doing his alphabet sound sticks, but we are going to probably be moving on to some of the um, short vowel sticks from Unit 2. Here, I can just kind of show you really quick. And we're going to be practicing segmenting and blending with these ones, and then just different activities that I have ready to so, use with thank those. you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time bye